In section 4.5, we're going to be studying Lobby-Tell's rule. This is what the theorem for Lobby-Tell's rule states. It says, if the limit as x approaches c of f of x divided by g of x produces the indeterminate form of 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, and if the limit as x approaches c of f prime of x divided by g prime of x equals l, then the limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x equals l. Now this seems a little bit confusing at first, but let's look at a couple of examples and I think it'll make uh, much more sense. Let's say we're looking at the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cos 2x divided by 5x. Now it's very important when we're uh, seeing if Lobby-Tell's rule works and if it does apply we have to write things out pr uh, properly. So first of all uh, let's do the limit as x approaches 0 of the numerator and this will equal well if I plug a 0 in for x and cos it's going to be cos 0 which is 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0 and if I do the limit as x approaches 0 of the denominator, I also get 0. So therefore, this limit produces the indeterminate form zero over zero. Do not write that the limit equals zero because that is or zero over zero because that is not correct. Just state that this limit produces the indeterminate form zero over zero. Therefore, lobby tells rule will apply. So I've shown that this limit is a candidate for lobby tells rule. And here's what lobby tells rule says. It's the same limit as x approaches zero. What's the limit as x approaches 0? Now we take the derivative of the top. Well, the derivative of the numerator, the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of negative cos is, uh, sorry, the derivative of cos is negative sine. So negative times negative sine is going to be sine 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is 2. And the derivative of the bottom is 5. Now if I substitute, I get the limit, sorry, I get 2 sine, 2 times 0 over 5. This is the sine of 0, which is 0. This ends up being 0 over 5, which is therefore 0. So the first thing we need to do to review is we need to show that the limit of the numerator is 0, the limit of the denominator is 0. Make this statement and then apply Lobby-Tell's rule to evaluate the limit. All right, uh, let's just determine whether or not Lobby-Tell's rule would apply in these three cases. Now, we're not asked to evaluate the limit, just determine whether Lobby-Tell's rule applies. So, first example, we will take uh, the limit as x approaches 0 of the numerator, and sine 0 is 0, and the limit as x approaches 0 of the denominator. And that equals negative 1, so no Lobby-Tell's rule does not apply for this one. Looking at the next one, again, quickly, if you plug in um, for 2, you're going to get sine of 2 over 0. And that, does again, does not form the indeterminate form of 0 over 0, so Lobby-Tell's rule does not apply. In this example, um, if I do the limit, as x approaches 2 of the numerator, it's going to be the sine of 2 minus 2, which is the sine of 0, which is 0. And the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 also equals 0. So yes, this is of the indeterminate form 0 over 0, so Lobby-Tell's rule would apply. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. Okay, and at our first example, we are going to have um, the limit as x approaches 1 of ln x over x squared minus 1. So again, first of all, this is the limit 
as x approaches 1 of ln x, and that's going to be 0. And the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1 is also going to equal 0. So we could say that this limit, clean that up a little, this limit produces indeterminate form of 0 over 0. The lobby tells rule applies. So if we go through lobby tells rule here, um, the derivative of the numerator is going to be 1 over x, and the derivative of the denominator is 2x. Plugging a 1 in, I get 1 over 1 over 2 times 1, and this limit is going to be 1 half. Okay, I encourage you to pause the video and to give this question a try. Okay, I hope you had a chance to try this one. So again, if I tried to evaluate the limit of the numerator, And this is going to be the limit as x approaches 3 of f of 5. And f of 5 is equal to 0. So this is going to be 0. And if I do the limit as x approaches 3 of the denominator, 3 squared is 9 minus 9 is also going to be 0. So this limit produces the indeterminate form of 0 over 0. Okay, so now Lobby-Tell's rule applies, so therefore the limit as x approaches 3. Well, the derivative of the numerator is a chain rule, so it's going to be f prime of 2x minus 1 times the derivative of the inside, which is 2, and the derivative of the bottom is 2x. So now, this is going to be 2, and if I plug a 3 in for x, it's going to be f prime of 5, and if I plug a 3 into the denominator, 2 times 3 is 6. So this is 2 times, well, f prime of 5 is equal to 7, over 6, and this works out to be uh, 14 over 6, which is reduced to 7 over 3. And there would be your answer to that limit. Okay, again, I encourage you to pause the video and give this one a try. Well, hopefully you've had a chance to try this one. So again, let's first of all do the limit as x approaches 0 of e to the x minus cos x. So this is going to be e to the 0, which is 1, minus the cos of 0, which is 1. So this is going to be 0. And the limit as x approaches 0 of 4 sine 0, which is also 0. So this limit produces the indeterminate form of 0 over 0. So therefore, lobby tells rule applies. So now it's going to be the limit as x approaches 0. Well, the derivative of the numerator is going to be e to the x plus sine x over 4 cos x. And if I evaluate or x of 0, I'm going to get e to the 0, which is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. Cos of 0 is 1. So I'm left with 1 over 4, my final answer. OK, let's take a look at a couple of AP Calc questions you might encounter on the exams. So again, on this first example, um, 
Again, if you use direct substitution, and I'm not going to go through all the formal stuff here now because this is a multiple choice question and you want to try to do multiple choice as efficiently as possible. But clearly, if you plug zero in, you're going to end up getting uh, e to the zero, which is one, minus the cos of zero, which is one, minus zero. So this is going to equal zero. And in the bottom, you get minus zero minus zero, which is also zero. So lobby tiles rule applies. So if we take the derivative, I'm going to get e to the x plus sine x minus 2 all over 2x minus 2. And plugging in 0, this is going to become 0, so will that. And I'll end up with e to the 0, which is 1, minus 2 over negative 2. And that reduces to positive one half. Okay, here's another multiple choice question, and we're given the limit as x approaches infinity. Well, again, if you put an infinity in for x, you're going to get infinity over infinity, which is going to be an indeterminate form. So I am going to take the derivative of the numerator, which is going to be e to the 3x. Whoops. Oh, it won't be e to the 3x. It's the logarithm of e to the 3x plus x. So it's going to be 1 over e to the 3x plus x times the derivative of the numerator, which is going to be 3e to the 3x plus 1. So there's the derivative of the numerator all over 1. So if I just clean this up a little bit. This is going to be 3e so this is going to be 3e to the 3x plus 1 over e to the 3x plus x. Again, if I was to substitute in infinity, I would get still infinity over infinity. So I'm going to do lobby tells rule again. So taking the derivative of the top, it would be 3e e to the 3x times 3, which would be 9e e to the 3x. And the derivative of the bottom is 3e e to the 3x plus 1. And again, substituting an infinity would be infinity over infinity. So I'm going to take the derivative one more time. And I'm going to end up with 27 e to the 3x all over 9e to the 3x. So those finally cancel, and 27 over 9 is 3. My answer would be c. Okay, let's take a look at one free response question that involved Lobby Tell's rule. And this was from the 2019 AP exam. Okay, and a lot of good information in here. Okay, first of all, it tells us that uh, function h is differentiable with h of 2 equaling 4, and function h satisfies the uh, equation x squared minus 4 over 1 minus f of x all cubed. It tells us it's known that h, or the limit as h approaches 2 of h of x can be evaluated using L'Hopital's rule, so that's going to be important. And it says we want to use limits uh, to show or to find f of 2 and f prime of 2. Okay, well, since we can use L'Hopital's rule um, to evaluate the limit h of x, that must mean initially the limit as x approaches 2 of the numerator must be 0 and the denominator must be 0. So first of all, I could say the limit as x approaches 2, and I'm just going to look at the denominator here because I want to solve for f of x that must equal 0. So plugging in a 2 for x, I get 1 minus f of 2 all cubed is 0. So if I add the f of 2 cubed to the other side, and if I cube root both sides, I'm going to get the cube root of 1 is 1 is equal to f of 2 of 1. So I've found out what f of 2 is. So I've got my first requirement. 
Now I want to also figure out what f prime of 2 is. Okay? And um, since h of 2 equals 4 and h is differentiable, that implies that h is continuous. So therefore, the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x must also be 4. So if I apply L'Hopital's rule to this function, I'm going to get the limit as x approaches 2. Well, the derivative of the top would be 2x all over. The derivative of the bottom, using the chain rule, would be negative 3 f of x to the power of 2 times f prime of x. And this all is going to be 4 because the limit has to equal the value of the function if it's continuous. So now if I plug a 2 in for x, I can solve for f prime of 2. So doing that quickly, 2 times 2 in the numerator is 4. I know that f of 2 is 1, and 1 squared is 1, so this is going to be negative 3 times f prime of 2, and this has to equal 4. If I multiply both sides by negative 3 f prime of 2, I'm going to get 4 equals 4 times negative 3 f prime of 2. And if I divide 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 to the other side, I will get f prime of 2 is equaling to negative one third. And then I have found out the last part of my question. So there's an example of how um, lobby tells real can be used in a free response question. Okay, so there is your assignment, the next two slides. Okay, and there's the answers on the bottom. So give those a whirl. And if you have any questions, uh, you can ask me in class.